Hi, Sage. How are I'm, you? I'm fine. I'm very happy you got this wonderful show here. We're going to walk Thank around you. and you'll tell me all about it. Sure. And sure. when this is over, we'll know <laughs> everything about you. Right. First things here are uh, some watercolors. And I've had large prints made of some of the originals because the originals are all this, this size here. Cool. The, uh, the, these watercolors with two on a page started originally as a kind of challenge to myself to see if I could do 15 minute watercolors based on photographs that I saw on Instagram. And that lasted about a week. And then after that, the watercolors started taking a little longer because I wanted to have a little more detail and a little more you know, color you know, in, the, in the pieces. So this is the original here. And this one is the larger print. I was really surprised. I, I have a new website uh, called sagepaints-art.com and you can order prints from my watercolors and from my drawings uh, almost any size. And these are prints that were produced you know, from that, that website. Fantastic. Um, here are some of my graphite drawings and these started out as uh, preliminary work for some of my chasing and metal work. But as I began drawing them, the drawings sort of took over and became landscapes in their, in their own self. I do like doing these drawings. And the drawings uh, are things that I can come to and then uh, go away from, come back and, and finish. And they take a little bit more time and I like spending that time to make something that is kind of richly appointed. Yeah, you know, with the graphite. Yeah, I find that art is like therapy. You know, it's like I can spend a lot of time doing something when the mood happens. You know, you can't force these things, but uh, at least I'm talking for myself. Right. But um, you know, you, this is a great a great body of work. So this is really nice. And I'm I know you do other things also, yeah. and you could probably fill a few rooms. Yes, we can. <laughs> So anyway, uh, this is another series that I was working on. These are uh, wash paintings on uh, black paper. And these uh, images came from cylinder seals. I've been, it's been a long time fascination with me for uh, cylinder seals. And uh, the first top two here are Assyrian gods. And then there are some more, uh, I guess, typical or uh, not, uh, not uh, religious <laughs> Assyrian pieces. Uh, this uh, god here is Enlil, and that's Tiamat. And, uh, they were in uh, conflict for quite a while. Uh, then there's the lion with the ram, and I have more on the other side. I was drawing a lot of these. These are sort of secondary drawings. The first ones were these little graphite drawings here where I was drawing nine coins. And I really sort of collected the coins based on their imagery with horses. So these are like, you know, simply horses with uh, celestial events or uh, in their, their state. Uh, and then here there are some horses and they start to have riders on them. These uh, drawings here are colored pencil on uh, black paper again. And uh, this drawing came from this one here, because there was a lot. This of is my latest uh, piece of metal work. This particular and, uh, became horse. The, the main image for the, uh, the horse there. That's really beautiful. That's striking. So I would imagine your studio um, is quite big, and you work with metal, and you have a place to paint, and you have a place to do chocolate. Oh well, actually, the whole house is studios. There's a penny studio on the third floor. There's you know. Um, <laughs> the, the metal work and the and drawing and setting up is all done um, on the first floor. I so see. And in the basement. <laughs> so obviously you're a full-time artist. Yes, yeah, I have been almost all the time I've been in New York. You know, no so, kidding. Yeah. So so what is your background? You you went to art school, or you taught yourself? or uh, I went to uh, Florida State University and I started out there in theater and dance, and then I decided that since I wasn't going to be a, a premier ballet dancer, <laughs> uh, 
I was going to have to do something else, and I started doing graphics, and uh, graphics and sculpture. Sounds so, great. Uh, so that started me off like that. But when I went to some graduate work in England, I discovered bookbinding, which was something I had no idea about at book all. Bookbinding? Bookbinding. It's okay. actually making books by hand and, and portfolios and boxes and things like that. And somehow it was like a duck in water. I walked in there not knowing anything, and it was as if I was born to do it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real gift, you and know, that, when you can pick something up like that. So when I came to New York, uh, I knew that if I wanted to continue, uh, and go back to Florida where I had graduated and where I had my parents, uh, that I would be waiting tables all the time and not being able to do any, anything that I wanted to do. So I said, I'm going to stay in New York. I'm not going to work for anybody else. And I opened a binding. And I started doing work and teaching at the Center for Book Arts and, and things like that. That's, 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 so. that's really good. You know, it uh, looks like you've, you've done what you what to do, what you set out to do. Right, yeah. You know, uh, a lot of people are forced to uh, live otherwise. The, the, the artists are a select few, you know, so it's, you're fortu very fortunate to realize your gifts and act on them. That's, that's great. Yeah, well, it, it was really nice, but uh, the thing is, even though I had you know, the book binding, I also started doing paste papers, which is a, a medieval way of decorating paper. and. Uh, I sort of brought it into the 20th century because the face papers that were being made before marbles uh, were things that the binders used to take leftover paste, mix a little watercolor with them, and then sort of brush designs on paper so that they would have something to cover their cheap additions. I brought it into the 20th century with 100% uh, rag paper, large sheets, and uh, acrylic permanent colors so that uh, you'd have something that was durable and usable. The uh, first decorative papers when I came to New York in 1977 were only like cockerel marbles and, and sort of commercial marble papers. They were only 17 by 19 and you couldn't do anything with them. You'd have to buy two or three sheets to actually cover an album because the, the sheets were so small. And then I started making these sheets that were 25 by 39, and the decorative paper market just sort of went, ah. <laughs> and other people started to do that afterwards too. Because now you had a sheet that was big enough to make a photo album and still have enough left over for a box or a couple of little you know, diaries and things. Yeah, so and, look at that. Yeah. An expert who actually influenced his industry. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to look at some of the paper tapestries now because these are made with my paste papers. Um, and I can talk a little bit about those. Uh, when you see this paper, I know this is a very dark evening, it's one of the romantic things that you know, I was sort of doing. But you'll notice that there are these little gold squares and sprinkles of gold and things in that. One of the things that I was doing with the paste papers was I was bringing in uh, medieval techniques and Japanese techniques to the paste papers. So uh, there were techniques that we used in lacquerware, and I applied them to the paper. That's where like the gold sprinkles come in, and the geometric cutting of, of the uh, of the gold leaf, you know, also was a part of that that lacquer technique. But uh, I had done some things where you actually print uh, an image and then drop gold leaf onto it and then brush it away when it dries, uh, which is out of the Portuguese. But I found most, uh, the most useful techniques were the, uh, the Japanese uh, techniques of uh, broken gold and broken metal leaf that I would put into the papers. Uh, I, I would imagine that you have traveled quite a bit. No, I, I've been, I've, when you're a bookbinder and, and um, an artist, I think you become a monk. <laughs> And your house is a monastery. <laughs> yeah, I understand that too. You're alone in your ivory tower, but it is a way to, uh, you've got to spend a lot of time producing art, you know, or, or whatever you desire to do, you know. Right, yeah. So, uh, anyway, the, the tapestries here, 
Uh, I started out uh, because the uh, when I was binding, I would have these offcuts. I was cutting the decals off the paper, and I really liked them. And I started to try to figure out how to use them in, in making something. And then I realized uh, when I started to do more uh, complicated images that I would have to actually cut up whole sheets of paper <laughs> and make strips that I could use in a regular fashion. So anyway, these uh, the first the first weavings were based on like Japanese design a little bit because I was involved with a Japanese furniture company at that time. And we were making folding screens out of my papers. We were covering tables and boxes and things like that. And I was learning how to do Japanese lacquerware, you know, at that point. And I pushed them even further because I started grinding up abalone shell and eggshells and putting those into the lacquer, you know, in geometric patterns and things. But uh, the, uh, the things that I did were based on the Japanese designs first. And then I started doing things that were bringing uh, the weather in and landscapes. This is sort of a little landscape here. Uh, I call Aurora Borealis because it has like a, the lights, you know, northern lights and stars and a sort of the mountain and the wind, you know, and a little home where the hearth is. It's, um, it's, be it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And then uh, one of my other fascinations was uh, I had been to the Brooklyn Museum, and they had these little Ashanti gold weights mm -hmm. used to, like, you know, uh, to weigh out gold powder and stuff in Africa. And I loved the designs on them. Mm -hmm. And I made this is one uh, based on an Ashanti gold weight. And there's another one, you know, over there, which we'll see in a moment. But uh, that became a, a large part. And then I started doing some. Uh, more abstract kind of things like this one here that I call it all adds up. And there's kind of a cityscape, you know, on this side. I call this radio. It's kind of a, a tower with an aerial. <laughs> but you can see what you want to see in it. Uh, and then this is also another landscape with, you know, sun, sunlight, you know, sort of like dawn coming up. Uh, this is one here is also uh, an Ashanti gold weight kind of picture. It's really true, you know, has you, uh, as a viewer or a lover of art, when you talk to the artist and you learn what drove him to make this or how he evolved what he's doing, it really makes a difference. Like, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just walking by something, now I see something and I understand, oh, this is, this is Asian, or this is from Portugal, or the, the idea came here, or the idea went there. Oh, mm -hmm. this is Arsidia, that's the stars. <laughs> you know, it's like... Well, I mean, that, that's where it sort of came from, but then the whole idea of, of art is to make something that's symbolic, and hopefully timeless, so that people will see it as being fresh all the time, you know, no matter how old it is. Uh, in this one, I started using some uh, pieces that are not actually strips of paper. So I have like these, these waves and I'm incorporating some different kind of movement into the tapestries, which uh, sometimes could be a little rigid. With this one, I was trying to keep uh, as close as I could to the, uh, the actual symbolism of the, of the feet. And it has the, you know, the wheel in here and the triple jewel and Buddhist crosses in there and I forget what this one is. And then there's the border which is uh, supposedly a lotus border but we know lotuses are not vines. <laughs> so, but that's the, the idea you know, behind that. And the, the main silver paper in here is actually a, a, an oriental tea chest paper which you can't get anymore because <laughs> they're just not making it. You can't get it anymore because you used it all up. Well, I have two sheets left. <laughs> I have two sheets left. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, this, this, this is sort of the, the medium-sized tapestry that I used to do. I used to do much larger than this. They were like, you know, probably down to here and, and probably, you know, wider like that. And that was when I had uh, larger corporate clients, you know, purchasing things. So... But like uh, all of these smaller ones here are what I call my domestic size, you know, because I wanted to make things that were affordable and people could carry off and 
fit into their homes. <laughs> See, so like, where would I see your artwork? If you have corporate clients, does it end up in their houses or in their offices? Uh, it had been in offices, you know, when I had yeah. a little representation and they were selling things, you know, to yeah. like AT&T and yeah. to, uh, to corporations for their offices, you know, more than, uh, more than their domestic kind of things. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sure those, those tapestries have moved on because uh, I've been doing these things for over 40 years. <laughs> And there are have there have been a lot of them. Yeah. So, yeah. That sounds great. Here are some more of the uh, Assyrian cylinder seal inspired pieces. This one here is also a, a, a god. This is Ninurta. And that one with the little ram and the red birds and stuff. Of course, the cylinder seals are not in color, so the colors are all mine. <laughs> in this thing here. But uh, my main body of work, you know, for the past you know year and a half or so, has been uh, doing these toucan portraits, and these I have really enjoyed working on. Uh, well, they're and, beautiful. And, oh, thank you, thank you. So, but I, I still try to keep them into the square format. You may have noticed that almost everything in the show is square. <laughs> But I really like the birds and, and each of their personalities, and I've been learning a little bit about them because I don't have any in my house live. <laughs> Do you go to zoos a lot? Or? I was surprised to find out that there are, are actually toucans at the uh, Staten Island Zoo. And it's nice to see them flying around. And I'm sure you work from photographs too. Oh yeah, these have to be from photographs. It's yeah. like this, because there's too many species and they're spread all over uh, yeah. Central and South America. What is your YouTube channel? Because I know you oh, guys- Oh, my YouTube channel is uh, Sage Reynolds. It used to be called Serapagia, but you can get to my channel either way. Uh, and it's basically uh, instruction on, on bookbinding techniques. Um, and that's what's you know, given me in my largest you know, following. Yeah, because you're following is 30,000 people, which is yeah. Yeah. quite a quite an achievement. And yeah. how long have you been doing YouTube? I've been doing YouTube, I, I guess some of the, the oldest videos are around 12. 12, 12 years, years old. So. But like I, I show you how to make uh, portfolio boxes, how to make clamshell boxes, how to you know line things and cover things. Because one of the things that happened when I came to New York was like I really had to make things efficient. And uh, I brought all of the old bookbinding uh, techniques into the 20th century using modern adhesives and, uh, and rollers for the glue and you know, special knives because when I was taught, I was taught the traditional way where you had to sharpen a knife all the time and it's mm. only sharpened on one side mm. and you had hot glue that was like melted horse hooves yeah. and stuff and it smelled terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but when we got here, uh, time was of the essence, you know, and when you have to make a lot of things, you have to, like, make it really well and fast, and that's what I did with all of these videos. So whenever I had projects of multiple pieces, I would show them how to, uh, show people how to, like, do this efficiently so that you don't waste materials and you can get things done quickly and out of the, out of the studio. I really enjoyed, um looking at your artwork and learning about it. Um, every artist is different, so you, know, you made your own path. Right. And I know you do other things too, do a lot of crafts, right? Do a lot of rings and necklaces. Well, and well that's, the, that's the jewelry part. The jewelry part. Yeah, because like, I went to FIT for probably about six years, you know, mm -hmm. doing you know, part-time work there at, to learn to do the, the chasing and repousse. Yeah. But, um, that uh, I was already doing it, sort of, but I just needed to have the traditional you know, background so I could see what was supposed to happen <laughs> instead of what I was guessing at all the time. <laughs> so, but uh, while I was at FIT and learning how to do the, the metal work, because I actually wanted to do tableware, uh, and uh, I just sort of fell in love with stones. And, once I learned how to you know, make settings for the stones, uh, I 
started making jewelry that actually pushed the stones forward and the metalwork was like minimal, you know, around it. Excellent, excellent. One thing leads to, leads to another, you know? That's great. Well, I, uh, I congratulate you on a life well lived, you know, and uh, I hope you do get to go to more countries so you can actually see these I would like first. to travel, but you know, it's getting to be you know, like difficult to move <laughs> at all. Life is what it is, yeah. you know, but uh, please keep us informed when you have another a show, another I exhibit. Will. I know, sure. I'm sure you can bring out a lot of different things, and I know this exhibit has been extended and you're going to half of it's going to go someplace else and you're going to actually bring in New more stuff, stuff more stuff for to the, fill up the walls for the next two weeks yes <laughs> well that's that's excellent excellent yeah. so right now we're at art on the terrace mm -hmm. on richmond terrace in staten right. island yeah and this is where you live not here but nearby About three blocks away three blocks look away. look at that <laughs> so it wasn't such a big thing to bring all your artwork here no so it's a, it was great that they, they invited you to hang oh, here. Right. Yeah. Well, I will be in the uh, Staten Island Museum show that opens in June. You know, they're taking my vitrine and several of my pieces of metalwork, you know, for that show. Okay. We'll see right. you there. See you there. Thank you very much, Sage. Sure. Thank you, Clint.